Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the visual uh, pr principles. So how we interpret things that are in our visual field and how our brain understands them. So we're going to start with Gestalt principles and these are principles that basically say whenever we're getting a visual image, our brain wants to understand it as one unified one unified object. It's easier for us to see a bunch of different things in groups than try to interpret all of the small things all individually. So um, here's an example here. You can see this picture. It, it is a picture of a bike. And it's so much easier for us as, as we look at this to see this as a bike than for our brain to go, okay, I see this triangular portion and I see this triangular portion and then I see this circle and that circle and then I see, and, and that is harder and is more complex. It's just easier to understand it as one object than it is um, all of the different parts individually. And so so there are some principles that fall under um, Gestalt, and so I'll just briefly tell you about some of those principles. Um, these are going to work together in this image. So in this image, you will see both closure and figure ground. So first, closure is where the object isn't actually all enclosed, but your brain just fills it in and, and you see one image even though the image really isn't there. And you see closure with the octopus or the squid here. You can see it's actually not there. There is no lines connecting this squid at all, but your brain fills in the lines because it has seen something like that before. And so you see the squid even though the squid's not there. This also is figure ground. Figure ground is where your brain focuses in on one object and that kind of becomes the figure and everything else becomes the background. And so when you're focusing in on that figure, that becomes what your mind is focused on and everything else just becomes the scene and you miss out on what's in the scene. And so here, depending on what you saw first, so when I looked at that, I first saw the squid and so I failed to see that there was actually a whale in the picture. Um, and maybe your mind did it the other way. Maybe you saw the whale first and so your mind was focused on that whale and that became your figure. Um, people like to use these in illusions because since you like to focus in on, on one image as your central focus, um, you will often see illusions where they hide other things in the background and then they kind of pop out at you because you didn't see them at first. So that's closure and figure ground in this one image. Here we've got proximity. Proximity tells us that whenever we see a group of objects, if they're close together, we interpret it as, as one group rather than a bunch of small groups. So on the left, you probably saw one group of circles um, rather than a bunch of little circles. On the other side, on the right, you probably saw um, three groups because they're close together, they're, in, they're close in proximity, and so you saw three groups rather than a bunch of little dots because those that are closer you interpret them as a group together. Then there's continuity and continuity says that our mind when we see lines we want to see continuous lines that flow um, rather than jagged lines. And so when you see the image on the left, you probably see two lines that intersect in the middle. Um, and so probably what you see is something like this, one line that goes this way and one line that goes that way, rather than if you were to look at this, you probably didn't interpret it as two V's, just because your mind wants to see it as a line, as a continuous flow. Um, and another principle is similarity. When you look at this image, you probably see two groups. One group is a group of triangles and one group is a group of circles. And the reason why you see two groups is because you probably interpret the circles together because they are the same shape. And then you interpret the triangles together because they are similar shapes as well. Rather than, you know, so many rows or so many columns, you probably saw circles, triangles. Okay. So then we've got how we understand depth. How do we understand when we're getting an image, how do we understand where it is in our visual field? So we use two different kind of cues. We either use monocular cues or binocular cues. So focus on that word mono. Mono means one. So in, in this slide, we're just going to talk about the depth cues that you use that you only need one eye for. So if I were to close one eye, 
what am I using to tell how far away something is? So there's a bunch of different things you can use. And in, in some things you need two eyes and some things you need one or you only have to have one. So everything in this image right here, um, these are all monocular cues. I could, I could close one eye and I could see all of these. And so I'll tell you what some of those cues are. So you only need one eye to tell that things that get farther away get smaller. So you can see as the railroad gets farther away, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller out in the distance. Also, to tell depth, something moves farther up the horizon the farther away it gets. And I don't need two eyes to see that. I could close one eye and I could still see that something is getting farther up the horizon and so it's getting farther away. Um, same thing with the trees. The trees are really big close up and they get smaller as they get farther away. Um, I don't have to have both of my eyes open to see that. I could close one eye. Um, some other things that you don't see in this picture are interposition. If something's overlapping something else, then you know it's in front. Um, if it's brighter, you know it's closer to you. And if it's darker, then it is farther away. And those are all some things that you use to help you see depth. And you don't have to touch it to know that it's farther away. You can just use your vision to tell it's farther away. And you'll, for monocular cues, you'll need one eye to interpret how far away something is. But then we also use binocular cues. So by means two, and so that can help you. Binocular cues are when you're using two eyes to interpret depth. And so um, when we're using two eyes, there is something unique that happens. So two eyes are getting two separate images. And because of retinal disparity, that's the space you have between your two eyes. It's called retinal disparity. That means the images that are going to your brain are slightly different. They're about an inch to an inch and a half to two inches, just depending on how big the space is here. But they're a little bit offset of each other. And so you're getting a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left of whatever you're focused on. And so those two images go into your brain and your brain is putting them together to create a three dimensional image. So if you're only seeing one eye with one eye here, like let's say we were just using our right eye and you closed your left eye, you would only get this image. That's all that you would get to your brain or vice versa. If you closed your right eye, this image would all would be all that you would get back into your brain. So when we're using both of them, your brain puts them together and it gets an image kind of like this and that creates depth. It actually is the same thing they do in 3D movies. They, they project two offset images onto the screen. And so they're creating depth on the screen when there really isn't depth. That's what you do in, in your visual cortex. So you're taking two offset images and pulling them together. Okay, that's it for uh, visual, um, visual perception. There's a few other things that you should just make sure that you know, that you check on. Um, make sure you understand the phi phenomenon, um, perceptual constancies. Our brain wants to see things the same as it's seen them before. Um, and perceptual adaptation that we can adapt to inverted fields. And our brain will eventually adapt to that. Okay, if you have any questions, make sure that you contact me. I hope this was helpful for you.